So yes, um, the Para Powerlifting Championship, uh, it's our major focus tonight on the program because we want to find out how Nigeria is getting ready to host the world. Uh, the main organizing committee has been inaugurated in Abuja yesterday. So that put us on track for a world-class event. But let's also take a look at what's going on. Uh, a lot of sporting activities, particularly basketball. Before we do that, let's welcome Alfred Okoligwe. Alfred, uh, good to have you here tonight again. Delighted to be here, Austin, and uh, very good evening to you. Okay, good evening to our viewers once again. Let's let you know that the D Tigers head coach has been talking about the D Tigers all the while because they're getting ready for the World Championships. Basketball is busy as D Tigers head coach Alex Wara has invited 12 players for the next round of the FIBA Men's World Cup qualifiers to be hosted in Lagos next month. You know, the first the first round they were they the fact they breezed past their opponents. The 12 man team expected to report to camp on the 6th of September will be headlined by Portland Trailblazers Al Farouk Aminu uh, will last feature for Nigeria. Uh, the last time he featured for Nigeria was in 2015 when the team played in the FIBA Afro Basket Championship. Team captain Iko Diogo who recently signed a contract with uh, Bioman Vas Vasqueros in Puerto Rico will make a return alongside Benjamin Uzo. Remember Ben Uzo? Yes, he's coming back. Iken Arobu, Mbamalu Bryant, Ikechuku Nwamu, Christopher Obekpa, Emenago, Clinton and Akindele Ayodeji. Others are Stanley Okoye, Aminu Alade, and Ekenechuku Ibekwe, who were part of the Rio 2060 Olympic adventure. Um, some stability in the team. We're getting to see some of those players that we know coming back. And for this man, it's all about sustaining the momentum that they started in the first round. Uh, it's nice to see uh, the guys you mentioned. You know what they did uh, with Afro basketball when we won it after a long time? Um, uh, that was in Tunisia, I believe. Uh, and so this guy is coming back. And there, I mean, Al Farouk, um, I mean, we're coming back to mm -hmm. that team. The stability ben that Uzo. Ben Uzo, the Mbamalu Hushun, uh, when Nigeria got to the finals, uh, one of the new additions to, to the squad that, um, you know, we have in the... There is a level of stability coming to basketball mm -hmm. that I'm beginning to see. Our players are beginning to show up in the national team. Uh, they want to play. The talk uh, before now has been that, uh, okay, because of the leadership crisis, the guys that won the Afro basketball in 2015 don't want to play for a national team. But hey, their parents now just shows that they've been talking, and um, I think this is the best time for them to, to show up. But what the coach said in naming this term, uh, 12 players, was that the time, given the window that they have, these guys will just show up. There's no need uh, asking uh, players to come and fight for a shirt. You know the guys who are doing well. Put them, and this roster is going to play the the the, Af uh, the Nigerian leg, the next round of the World Cup qualifiers. Mm. So that's good news for uh, basketball. Uh, seem to be enjoying some stability, and of course the players are enjoying what they are giving. Let's see. Let's see what the second round of the qualifiers will give. The good thing is that they're going to be at home. Mm. Uh, so it's up to the fans now to mm. come out there and give it some support. Mm. Uh, the good thing about basketball is I think the success they've been recording just made it easy for our followers to just keep following it. Yeah, followers, we are big, you know, people follow basketball. And when it comes to, in terms of popularity and spread, you know, when uh, you take football out, I think the next ball you can easily relate with is um, basketball. Um, perhaps maybe club level and all of the things that have been happening in the administration of basketball in Nigeria, kind of affecting club level. When it comes to the national team, I think it's intact. The, the, a large chunk of players that make up the national team are drawn from the United States of America, perhaps one or two that play in Europe. But we know that we have guys who have been schooled in playing this game, who have been exposed to, I don't want to use the word superior, but who have been um, ex ex exposed to training and they understand the sport and it's, it's part of their DNA. So it's a come back, bring the expertise you've acquired, come show it to the national team right. and we're doing well. That's right. So we'll, we'll continue to monitor that one. Next month will be a busy, busy month for basketball in Nigeria. The D Tigers will be busy. The D Tigers will be busier. So um, a lot of action to follow in basketball in Nigeria. Let's just wish the D Tigers all the best. And also remember to follow, support, and pray for the D Tigers as they go to Spain next month for the FIBA World Championship. Let's get on with the show now. I told you at the start of the program that we will be celebrating para powerlifting in Nigeria. What a story powerlifting tells us whenever we talk about them. 
just concluded the World Championships African qualifiers. They went to Algeria to win medals, broke records. And so the world recognizes Nigeria as a powerlifting country. So the IPC said, look, let's come together and see what these guys can do. They gave Nigeria the right outfit to host the World Championships. It will take place from the 21st till the 30th of January 2019. And this was uh, at the inauguration of the main organizing committee. You see Dr. Kweku Tando there, that's because Lagos is hosting. And the Minister for uh, Youth and Sports, Barrister Solomon Dalong, was there, the president of the Para Powerlifting Federation of Nigeria. Uh, uh, Queen Ubo was also there. Look, Alfred, if we are doing so well in a particular sport, this is the right thing to do to announce to the world that, look, we can take it a step further. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's nice. Um, the last time the Paradis went to Algeria uh, to take part in the African uh, champ the World Championships, uh, Seven gold, two silver. won so many gold mm. medals. Uh, this is just what it now means is that we can take a full complement of team. Perhaps the one that was okay, uh, because of cost, let's take for uh, a particular uh, category, let's take one athlete. Now, because we are hosting, we can have two, three, four, mm -hmm. you know, participate in this. Uh, there are people who have not had the opportunity of attending a competition like this. That's this right. creates an opportunity for them. And, I mean, building local heroes of these guys, each time we hear they go out there, they make so much, uh, they so much impact. This time around, we are watching them on home soil. We will see what they do against the rest of the world. And I think um, to just send that clear message mm -hmm. out there that when it comes to para power lifting, the place to be is in Nigeria. It's Nigeria. And the IPC, the International Paralympic Committees, they said, Alfred, if you are hosting, you must have a youth program in place. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about the same para power lifters for quite some time now. So this is another opportunity for the Federation to discover new talents. Uh, indeed, uh, it can uh, be more exciting than this. Uh, I mean, uh, given that now yeah, you have to, you must have a structure on ground. Uh, for guys who have not had the opportunity of being taken into the program, you know, being taken into um, uh, training them for this, this is an opportunity for them to have formal training, to, 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 to have class in terms of where they really belong and how do you go through regimented training to get the best out of it. So That's right. it, it can only get better. That's it right. can only get better with mm. this. And mm. we want to commend the association for putting and this together. And give us more opportunity to talk about para power lifting. So um, that inauguration was done in Abuja uh, yesterday. So we'll, we'll look forward to, uh, to it and see uh, how the Ministry for Youth and Sport will work with the Federation to give a world-class event because the world will be watching. The world will come down to Nigeria to compete. Later on the program, we'll be talking to the president and see how Nigeria is getting prepared to do that on so the Minister for Youth and Sport, Barrister Solomon Dalong, has been uh, responding after the inauguration of the main organizing committee. Let's listen to him and I'll be right back. Let me emphasize that um, today the world has adapted the strategy of specialization in sports. There are countries that put in their investment in only Olympic sports. There are countries that special, specialize in the areas of comparative advantage. For us in Nigeria, we have been adapting this attitude of jack of all trade and master of none. Sometimes we pumped a lot of money into a medal event and usually crash out. One of our policy directions is to begin to look at areas of our comparative advantage and put our resources so that at every outing, Nigeria will not be embarrassed. If we direct the resources we pump in other medal, single medal events into para power, swimming, and other heavy medal events, Nigeria will always top the medal table in any international competition.
So now you see the Ministry for Youth and Sports, they mean business in terms of developing para power lifting in Nigeria. Sports tonight on Channel TV. Let's go on this break. When we come back, more on Nigeria's preparations to host the World Para Power Lifting Championship. So don't go anywhere. Stay.